also were criminals, were being led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and the other on the left. But Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. When Jesus prayed to forgive his murderers as they were murdering him, he gave us a divine example and a divine promise. A divine example on how and when to forgive. Jesus was murdered for doing nothing wrong. He could have become angry and bitter about his horrible treatment. When you are abused by someone or treated poorly by a parent or a spouse or a sibling, a classmate or a coworker, or your own child who stole your freedom or failed to live up to your expectations and has dumped their adult problems on you, you have two choices. After you do what you can to make yourself safe, you can forgive that person, or you can hold bitterness and anger toward that person and sorrow in your hearts. Take a moment. Is there a person like that in your life who's wronged you? What is that person's name? When you, re when you remain bitter toward that person, you angrily hold on to their unjust treatment and relive it over and over again and become trapped in the spiraling cycle of bitterness. The evil act of that person against you begins to define your life and your identity and traps you in a prison of despair. When you choose to forgive that person, you become free from that cycle of despair. Follow Jesus' example on the cross and choose to forgive and move forward towards freedom. Jesus also offers a promise to forgive, to forgive us, you and I, for our sins of accepting the status quo in our life. The leaders of Jesus' day murdered him because he disrupted their status quo. He didn't fit into the life that they, had, they were comfortable with, the life that they had constructed for themselves that wasn't perfect, but it worked for them. They were comfortable with it. They knew where they stood. They had a sense of control. It was their status quo. Jesus said, give up your rules, give up your status quo, give up your compromises with the enemy. I'm gonna change everything and make it better. But they were afraid to lose the comfort and control and safety of the status quo, and they killed him instead. Jesus forgave them of that sin, even as they were committing it. What is the status quo that you are holding on to? Is it that bitterness toward that person that you, you thought of earlier? Is it the safety of an addiction? Is it a seed of racism and contempt for others who are not like you? Is it an obsession with material possessions or status? Are these the things that, you, that have become your status quo and begun to define your identity? Perhaps you're saying right now, that is my status quo. I can't and I won't give that thing over to Jesus. I choose my status quo over Jesus. Jesus, when he was on the cross, knew about that very thing in your heart. And he knows about it right now, and he forgives you for it. Jesus calls us to accept his forgiveness today. Amen.